Well, let's just get a little bit more about that breaking news in the channel. Uh, joined by the Kent MP, Damien Green. Uh, Mr Green, it's always lovely to see you, um, but on an occasion like this, dear goodness, how much more do you know? I suspect you might know a little bit. No, I, I know no more than is, mm. is, is coming out uh, publicly, but it's, it's clearly grim. It, incredibly grim. Just describe what it will be like in the channel at this time of year. I, I think we can all pretty much guess, though. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's freezing cold. Um, there's not much wind, so I can, you know, you can see that these terrible criminal gangs who organise this uh, will, have, will have pushed boats out uh, from France. But, but yeah, I mean, you just fear that the chance of anyone in the water surviving very long. We saw that terrible tragedy in Solihull. That was in mm. a lake. In, you know, imagine what the channel's like. Just the this, this scale of the rescue effort, and of course, we have had small boats, you know, capsizing in the channel on occasions before. It, it is the scale of the rescue effort on this one that, that, that leapt out to me. I wonder whether it should. We've got, uh, we've got light boats for a number of stations. We have a UK Navy boat. We have a French, French Navy boat. We have air search and rescue, two helicopters, an air ambulance on scene. I mean, is that the kind of level of response that you get at times like this, or does that suggest something? Well, I, I mean, it suggests how serious it is, but, mm. but that's obvious anyway. But, but yes, there are, you know, because of what, what's happening, uh, then both our Navy and, and the French Navy and obviously Border Force and, and lifeboats are very, very aware of you know, the possibility of this happening. It, you, we saw it once before, it was just over a year ago mm -hmm. since we had the, you know, the previous big tragedy. And, and you just have to draw the conclusion that you know, we need to stop this, mm -hmm. not just because we want control of our borders, important though that is, but to save lives, yeah. that this is not in any way a, a safe, decent way for people to get to this country. It, 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 it certainly isn't, but there are thousands that have done and, and will continue to do so. The only way to stop people dying in the channel is to stop people presumably getting, in, getting into those boats and in the first place. Is, is there nothing, and of course we were hearing from Rishi Sunak yesterday about getting people back to Albania uh, quickly if they're not supposed to be here, of course, for that to have happened, they need to have crossed the channel. Do we not now need to think even more seriously about something on the French beaches? I know we've increased the amount of money that we're paying and we know we have police officers there, but as yet that doesn't seem to have had an effect. It, it's, it's had some effect, but not oh, much sure, yet, yeah, I agree. But, but yes, we need to act on the French beaches, but also uh, we need to act further upstream, if you like. We know that a third of the people trying to cross the channel are from Albania. Uh, Albania is a safe country, it's a NATO ally of ours, it's an accession country, it's trying to join the European Union, um, and it's a democracy. So there is no reason for anyone to be a refugee from Albania. And one of the things that was announced yesterday that didn't attract much attention was that we're now going to have border force officers at Tirana. Mm -hmm. um, so that will stop people leaving in the first place. And the other thing, of course, is that if it, if it becomes recognised that actually uh, Britain has got tougher, and it, it is returning people more and faster than it has before, then that itself will act as a deterrent. We'll have fewer people in this dangerous position. Yeah, and, and of course, all of these measures incrementally will have an effect, and we will need to, to let them run for a while to, to, see, to see the full effect. But I am just hearing in my ear that, according to French sources, between 30 and 50 people were apparently on this boat. That is the, that is the scale of the, of the rescue operation that is ongoing right now. As a, as a Kent MP, you will know, you will have spent time with the RNLI and, and Search and Rescue. They have an awful lot of experience at dealing with the weather conditions that are around right now, I suspect. Yeah, I mean, the, the RNLI is, is a voluntary organisation. The people doing it are, are volunteers. It is one of the most magnificent charities we have in this country. It's people putting their own lives at risk to save other people's lives. And you know, they will be doing their, their absolute best to, to try and get people, if, if they're in the water, out of the water fast enough mm -hmm. so that they've survived. It's, um, if, if there were that many people and if the boat is capsized, then, again, you know, the only word I can use is grim and yeah. it's a desperate situation. Yeah, I, I just want one, one last question, if I can, just on, on the kind of the practicalities of, of the way that people are applying for asylum here at the moment. Look, look if, if you don't come from Afghanistan, Ukraine or, or, or Hong Kong at the moment, there is precious little way that you can get to the United Kingdom to apply for asylum until that changes it strikes me that we are likely to see people still attempting that route across the channel as the only way that they can get here. You couldn't get in through an airport, you might get in um, on the coast. Is there not an emerging argument for us to have some form of border 
force on the beaches in, in Cali to, to process people there or to at least start the process so that we don't have to risk, you know, potentially 30 to 50 people losing their lives this morning. I, 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 I'm not trying to be emotive about this, but you, you take... Sure, no, no, I, I, I get the point. And, and I think whatever argument there is for that, there's probably a better argument for saying to, to do it around the world, to designate places where you can come uh, as a refugee, as we have done, and not just the places you mentioned, but Syria as well. There was a, a successful Syrian scheme where we take people sure. from, from camps in the area where they get displaced. I think it's, it's more important to do that because, as you say, once they've got to the beaches in northern France, then you know, they've spent all the money, they've been in the hands of criminal gangs for a long time. It, it would be much better to do it at source in an area where, where the British people will be generous to people who are genuinely fear fleeing war and persecution. They just don't like being sort of taken for a ride by people who are using our instinctive generosity yeah. towards genuine refugees um, to exploit the system. And, and we've, got, we've got to sort of break that link. Mm. Um, the, the detail is kind of still emerging, emerging through my year at the moment. Um, local sources telling us the search operation will continue through the day. There is a certainty that there have been fatalities and indeed, given the temperature of the water right now, this is, this is not a search and rescue operation, this is a search and discovery operation. I mean, just, just, just a final thought from you about the, the, the way in which so many lives have, have, have essentially been, been lost at a time like this. I, I mean, it, it is grim in anyone's world, but, but this is happening again and again and again, and, and something needs to be done, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely, and, and you know, yeah. one of the effects, hopefully, of yesterday's announcement um, is that we minimise the number of people trying to use this, this desperate, unsafe, potentially fatal route to get to this country. Uh, and you know, the, the fewer people try it, the better it is for them as, as well as for us. Um, Damien Green, we will leave it there. Thank you so much for your time this morning.